One of the interesting features of the Catholic Church is the Sacrament of Reconciliation, a liturgical rite in which penitents reveal their deepest, most burdensome sins, and the priest offers absolution on behalf of God. And while the whole forgiveness of sins is pretty remarkable in itself, there always seems to be a fascination among outsiders with another aspect of the sacrament, the seal of the confession. Much like Las Vegas would like you to believe, what happens between a penitent and the priest stays between the penitent and the priest. But why is this? And are there any exceptions? This is Catholicism in Focus. Speak to a doctor about a medical condition, consult a lawyer about an issue of the law, or share a traumatic experience with a therapist, and they will be obligated to hold what is said in confidence or face losing their job. The idea of a professional keeping a secret on behalf of their client, just as a priest does for a penitent, is not all that far-fetched. What is unique, though, is the extent to which the priest is required to hold on to that secret. In the case of doctors, lawyers, and therapists, one is obligated to keep what is said in confidence under normal circumstances, but there is a limit to what they can and should withhold. When faced with a difficult situation, they may consult other professionals in their field, sharing personal information, and in the event that a patient or client reveals their intention to hurt themselves, another, or commit a serious crime, they are not only allowed, but compelled to divulge such information to authorities. This is not the case for a priest under the seal of the confessional. According to canon law, the seal of confession is inviolable. Canon 983 states, It is absolutely forbidden for a confessor to betray, in any way, a penitent in words or in any manner, and for any reason. What's interesting about this canon, and what many people don't understand, is that last part. In any manner, for any reason. While most people think of the seal as simply a restriction against sharing the contents of the confession with another, it actually goes much deeper. According to the next canon, a confessor is prohibited completely from using knowledge acquired from confession to the detriment of the penitent, even when any danger of revelation is excluded. A person who has been placed in authority cannot use in any manner, for external governance, the knowledge about sins which he has received in confession at any time. This means the priest may not share what he has heard with another priest, even if for the purpose of counsel, if it might reveal the identity of the penitent. It means that he may not call in an anonymous tip to the police or give a secret signal to someone else in the church, even if a serious crime has been or will be committed. It means that even if the priest finds himself forced to testify in court, or worse, on trial himself, he may not reveal anything he has heard in the confessional, even if it would exonerate the penitent or himself. And most interestingly, it means that, like a stockbroker on Wall Street, he cannot act on what he has heard in secret, even indirectly, if it brings harm to the penitent or reveals their sin. If he hears the confession of his finance officer that she is stealing from the church, he is forbidden to fire her, search her office, or conduct an audit based on that information. In other words, when a priest hears a confession, he essentially has to pretend, in just about every way, that he has not heard it. The reason for this is simple. The sacrament of confession is a sacred space. While the penitent is effectively confessing their sins to the human priest before them, theologically, it is much more appropriate to think of it as the penitent confessing their sins to God while the priest facilitates the conversation. It's for this reason that the church doesn't speak of the priest as the one who forgives sins, as only God can forgive sins. Rather, the priest is the official representative of God and the church who absolves the penitent, essentially declares that forgiveness has taken place. What happens in the confessional is not simply a conversation, but the forming of a covenantal bond between God and the penitent. The priest, being a witness and facilitator, has no right to reveal what he hears. Further, since the purpose of the sacrament is to restore a relationship with God, focusing on sin rather than civil guilt, the secrecy of confession ensures that people will not be deterred from the life-giving sacrament for fear of civil repercussions. They may speak to God freely and openly, holding nothing back. And the church does not mess around with the importance of this secrecy. While a doctor, lawyer, or therapist may be suspended or even lose their job for revealing confidential information, if a priest breaks the seal for any reason in any situation, he incurs upon himself an automatic excommunication, something that can be only remedied by the Pope. So, yeah, that's pretty serious. And it presents a rather challenging question for the church, and really, people like me who are about to be ordained and hear confessions. Without breaking the inviolable seal, 
What can a priest do in serious cases when the penitent confesses that they're about to commit a horrible crime, have abused a child, or plan to hurt themselves? First and foremost, the priest can focus on the contrition of the penitent. If they have come to the sacrament and confess these things willingly, there must be at least some remorse or feeling of guilt, and the priest should build upon this. Is it enough to convince the person to make a major change in their life? Can they persuade them to seek help? Might they be willing to speak with someone else, outside of the confessional, where actions can be taken? Since the priest may not force the penitent to divulge their sin to anyone else or do something that would cause them unjust harm, they can't require the penitent to turn themselves in or speak with them outside of the confessional, but he can strongly recommend it and should try his best to convince the penitent to make restitution for their sins. In extreme cases, if the priest does not feel that the penitent has presented an adequate amount of contrition for their sins, he may deny absolution, although this may not be particularly effective. Beyond this, there are a few pastor responses that are debated among theologians. Some, in somewhat of a technicality, have argued that only the confession of sins is guaranteed under the seal, and that if other information is revealed not confessed as sins, this may be shared. While popular among civil authorities, it has received backlash within the church. Others have suggested that a priest may share pertinent information for the protection of others as long as it does not reveal the identity of the penitent or cause them undue harm. For instance, if someone confesses that they plan to hurt another person, the priest may alert the authorities to protect the potential victim without revealing the potential attacker's name. This keeps the interest of the public in mind, although it too flirts fairly close to breaking the seal and is not accepted by all theologians. And really, unfortunately, outside of that, there's not a whole lot that a priest can do, given the importance of the seal of confession to the sacrament. Are there potential drawbacks to the teaching? Of course. In the interest of public safety, it would seem that the church should want to prevent more evil from happening, rather than what can be effectively interpreted as protecting the guilty party. And yet, in the eyes of God, what the church maintains is actually quite profound. In ensuring secrecy, the church creates a space for anyone who is contrite to return to the loving mercy of God and receive counsel for making restitution. The sacrament of confession is not a get-out-of-jail-free card. It's not about getting away with doing horrible things. Rather, it is a place where people burdened with sin can go to become unburdened. A place where sinners can receive the strength they need to begin to make things right. Sin is not something that we could ever handle ourselves, and for those in the depths of horrible, life-altering decisions, the last thing that we need is another barrier to God's grace. In keeping the seal of secrecy, we may not be able to absolutely prevent the next crime, but it is our hope that we might change a heart that would otherwise never have sought help. Thanks for watching this episode of Catholicism in Focus. This week, I want to especially thank Randy Stein for being awesome and supporting this mission. You too can be awesome just like Randy and donate to the cause, either with a monthly donation through Patreon or a one-time gift on PayPal, or simply by sharing this video with your friends.